Elder Christie said, and I know you're expecting this traditional uh, Mother's Day message, but, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but God is not traditional. Because the Word says the traditions of men cause the Word of God to be none effect. Right? So it's going to be a great message. It's a great word. I came to minister to everyone today. One thing you should know about Mother's Day around here is even though we, you know, want to honor our mothers, that it always applies to the men in the house as well. And this year, God is so cool that not only does it apply to the men in the house, but it applies to those of you who are not mothers yet. So it's for everybody. Say everybody. Now, I had some trouble with this message. Surprise, right? I mean, I had some real trouble. Like, I couldn't figure out what the title was. I'm not an Elder Christie. I mean, she's like, I'm not Bishop. He's really, right? I'm not even Pastor Aaron. I'm not Reverend Bob. I'm not anybody. I'm Reverend Connie. And um, if you know anything about me, you know that I have a little trouble. <laughs> And so I was, you know, Bishop, he's always, what's the message title? What's the message title? I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Do you want to hear some of the possibilities I came up with? Sure. Okay. One possibility was a symbol of authority. That's pretty good. One, another message title I came up with was power on your head. Oh, happy day. Yeah. <laughs> order, order, order in this court. I mean house. Mm. The number one accessory. I think I like that one. But nothing seemed to be working. So I came to the conclusion... Thus, the title of my message. <laughs> Help! I need somebody. <laughs> okay. Well, so it led me to um, kind of look about, one thing about a high school teacher is you're always looking at where you were and reminding students where they've been and bringing them into the place where they should be today. So I couldn't help but this took a hold of me. And so, of course, six months ago, I went back and took a look at 5777. Six months ago that we celebrated, we opened up the Hebraic year 5777. And if you remember, God said it was a year of vacation. Yes. And you were all so excited about that <laughs> until, you, until you heard the catch. And, you know, we couldn't hardly believe our eyes and our ears that God was actually saying this, and we knew there was a catch. And there was. And there was. And he said that it was a year of vacation that, you know, be, with a purpose. I mean, like I said, vacation always has a purpose. And God's purpose for us for the first six months of this year was a vacation so that we could rest. Say rest vacation with a purpose it was to rest when we rest we are refreshed that's why he said keep the sabbath right um so we have been resting for six months but how many of you realize that six months has come to an end and i hope you're refreshed I hope so, and you are if you, if you followed the instructions, and that was vacating those mountains. Now, God's purpose for that rest was so that we actually would be refreshed, and when we're refreshed, we would be able to recreate. Right. We can't create. I don't know about you, but Minister Ryan knows this. Um, some time ago, well, actually, it was around Passover time, he, w he came out to celebrate that feast, and I just was, I was just, you know, it, I was exhausted. I couldn't seem to make anything come together, so I called the big guns, both apostles. Can you come out and help me? 
put this, do something with this stage. I got a tore apart. I got, I need some help. You see, because I, I could not create when I was fatigued. So God said, take a break for six months. Get refreshed so that you could recreate. So I don't know if you know what time it is, but it's six months after that place. So vacation's over. And um, that purpose is now coming into place. Now, when I say we needed to be refreshed, it was so um, just encouraging to me when Minister Ryan and Bishop and I were over at um, uh, Walmart for something, and um, we had to uh, do something. I can't remember what we were getting. I think Minister Ryan was wanting us to make some more, so we were there buying chocolate like we really needed it, and marshmallows and, and all of that. And... And so I introduced her to Minister Ryan and to Bishop. And, and when I got a massage a couple days later, um, I, said, I said, so what did, you know, or, or I, I think she brought it up. Man, I was really surprised to meet the, that minister from Pennsylvania and your husband. I was really surprised um, that they, I was just surprised at how young Minister Ryan was. Like I just pictured like a minister would be older. And um, I said, okay. And, and she said, well, he was like so fresh. And I told Minister Ryan that, and he didn't think that was a compliment, but I did. I, I thought it was such a compliment that I wish he had said that about me. <laughs> and um, so anyway, then I realized uh, a couple of days later that Bishop and I have been doing this thing called Hello Fresh, you know, meals a couple times a week delivered to your house, so you have to cook them, of course. Um, but it was Hello Fresh. And Fresh began to stand out to me. And then I came home from work one day, pulled in the garage, Bishop opened the door, and I looked at him and I got out of the car and I said, You look so good. He goes, well, wh Why? Why do I? What do you mean? Why do I look so good? I don't know. You just look fresh. So God wants his people to be fresh. And that's why he gave us the vacation with a purpose. Okay. However, if I do my math right, it's time to go to work. Yeah. Okay. And if there's anything I know about work, uh, there's actually two things I know about work. And one is there's always a mission to work. Yeah. You know, there's always a mission involved with work. Have you figured that out yet? Yeah. Absolutely. And the other thing I've noticed is that you always need help. So I, if you were around our house Monday through Friday, you'd realize there's one mission, and that is to, Monday through Friday to get Mrs. Anderson in the car on time to go to work. <laughs> and that is a big feat. I mean, that is, um, you know, that's monumental at times. All right? And um, if, what I realize is I need some help to do that. So when it's time to go to work, we need to know what the mission is, we need to know that there's going to be help that is necessary. And if, if God said it was time to go to work, I know he has a mission. Yes. I hope you know what that mission is. But if you don't, you will by the time this day is over. And like anyone with a mission, I'm going to guess he's going to need some. Help. I need somebody. Help. Not just anybody. Help. You know, I need someone. Yep, I'm not going to use just anybody to help me. I can't use just anybody to help me. I don't know if you know that or not. Wow, even God needs help. Surprise. Why should that surprise us? And why should it surprise us that he's not just looking for any help? I'm trying to think if I want to give this example of school or not. Mm, I think I'll keep going. Part, okay. <laughs> Maybe it does fit. So when I need some help, I don't just ask any student in my class. Because okay, some are just not capable of helping me. 
or it's more work to have them help me than for me to just do it myself. So I'm pretty choosy about who I ask to help me. And, you know, I've had some thoughts about help. Personally, I've had some real thoughts about help. When I was young, was so much younger than today. I never, I never needed anybody's help in any way. Change my mind about help. I need some help. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you can relate to that. <laughs> Bishop says he can. So I would like to, you know, somebody established Mother's Day. So I would like to establish a national day for help. And it might be called something like Help Meets Day. Helpmates Day, meet, help meet is the King James term, but helpmates day. And you know what? That applies to everybody. That applies to a Nate, to a Robert. That applies to a Greg and a Deacon Heath. That applies to a Miss Stephanie that doesn't have any biological children of her own, although she teaches all of your children every week. Yeah, right? Thank you. So it applies to all of us. A National Day of Help, a National Helpmates Day is a day of if you can be trusted to help, then this day's for you. Okay. But it's not just for everybody because not everybody can help. Okay. So go with me to Genesis 2.18. And the, are you, you, know, you probably know this by heart, but I want you to see two things here. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I, I lived on that for, you know, a long time because when Bishop and I got married, that was, he quoted that for a long time. It's not good that I be alone. I will make him an helpmate for him, King James. In other words, I will make him a helpmate. I will make him um, a suitable helper. I will make him an aid. I will make him a support. I will make him... Someone who helps accomplish the mission. Right. Now, surprise, I guess God thought Adam needed help too. In fact, he was so concerned about Adam um, having help that God said in his word that he was going to make the helpmate. Make. He wasn't just going to make anybody to help. He was going to make the helpmate that was suitable for Adam. I think he's making helpmates that are suitable for him right now. Do you qualify? I think so. I think so if you're here. Now, um, mate, okay, we know what help, mate, help means, but mate is the opposite. It's mirror, it's gateway, it's an avenue of birth, and are you ready for this? You probably know this. Creation, help, mate, you rested for six months with a purpose to get refreshed so that you could create. Not just mothers, not just females. Everyone, okay, I'm taking this word and applying it to what God is saying today. So, I was really interested in the word make. And make comes from, in the broadest sense, um, accomplish. So, God says, I will accomplish a helpmate. I will govern a helpmate. I will advance a helpmate. I will commit to a helpmate. I will, lots of um, definitions here. I will maintain. Yeah, right? I will perform. Now, this is God. God thinks this helpmate is so important that he's, he's going to make the helpmate, and these are the things he's going to do to make. 
He's, he's going to govern. He's going to keep. Man, how, do, how many of you know some people need to be kept? Yes. I am a kept woman. No, not really. But really. I will labor. How much labor has God put into you to put you in a place that you are qualified to help him? Wow. It's good, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, like, I like that myself. So did you know that you were being made? Whenever you make something, there's a lot of, you know, molding and pulling and reshaping and cutting away and, you know, this doesn't work, get rid of that, you know. Yeah. Whenever you make something, there's a process. And I think God's been a long time making us yeah. Yeah. so that we would be the perfect helpmate. And based on our will, you know, we've been preaching around here, not my will, but thine be done. But based on our will, it is in direct proportion of how long it's taking him to make us. If our will takes over all the time, then let me tell you, you're slowing the process down of being made. (laughs) Yeah, if you want the process to speed up and you want some of this pain, like, you know, to go away from being hammered on, then, you know, you got to let go of your own will and take on what Jesus said, not my will, but thine, meaning the Father's will be done. Now, some of um, the help I see, you know, you know, are what I would call late bloomers. And when I hear the word uh, late bloomers, I think of years ago, this is a long time ago, so many years ago, I don't even know how many, But I was, um, every time I hear the words, not just in church, but anywhere, I think of Melissa Anderson because at one point, that was the word I spoke over her. Now, she was on a venture, and, um, and, you know, I was just uh, praying for her, and I I said, you know, you know, don't worry about it. There are late bloomers. They still bloom. How many of you know she's blooming? She's blossoming. She's like coming alive to help God with his mission. Amen. Bam. Bam. Believer actuated music. So at the same time, God has been making us as help. He's also been building the temple of the new house. Have you figured that out? Have you, do you see that? God can do more than one thing at a time. Unlike me. He's a multitasker, probably the genius of it. But he's been putting the finishing touches on this temple for the the new house, the foundation of the new house. And when it gets completed, that is when he will allow the sheep to come. Do you know you're being made? Do you know you're being built? Have you felt that? Have you been in discomfort with uh, a hammer or a saw, cutting away the flesh? It hurts. When things are being made and built, how many of you have to follow instructions? You know, men, supposedly, they don't have to. They just figure it out. Me, where's the directions? I have no intuitive ability with this at all. Where, where's the step, step one? Step two, I need the instructions. And then I realized that God had been giving us instructions all along. He's been giving us instructions as up as recent as the pastor said, on the right side. Yeah. Yeah. That was an instruction, yeah. if you heard that message. Mm-hmm. He was giving us an instruction about stop sinning mm-hmm. or stop right. trying to stop sinning. Yeah. Uh, an instruction. He was giving us an instruction about trusting him. Trust him. Yeah. Who, or who, who are you trusting? But it came down to trust him. Yeah. Instruction. Instruction number four. Open yourself up to receive. Yeah. You can be made like that if you will open up yourself to receive 
from him. Let the maker do what he does best. Let him make you. You know, sometimes I wake up with things and I don't know exactly what to do with them. <laughs> so I didn't know what to do with this statement, but I kind of altered it a little bit um, for the purposes of my message. It says, um, I just feel like uh, God is saying, nothing I can see but you when you help, help, help. And really the phrase is when you dance, dance, dance. But nothing I can see but you when you help, help, help. You want to get God's attention? Help him. I know every place and every um, minute the students in my classroom that are my helpers, I mean, I'm there to teach them, but you have to understand there's a lot of other things that go on. Um, I know where they are. I'm, I can see them. Whether they're in my room or not, I can see them. I know what class they have, I know what teacher they have, what hour, I know what extracurricular activities they do, I know what their practice schedule is, I know what their game schedule is, I know what their parents are like, because nothing I can see <laughs> but them when they help me. And God is the same way with you. He's making you, and nothing he can see but you when you help him. So if you remember six months ago, God said it was a year for the Levites. That was great. That was encouraging. Halfway in the year, you know, well, what about those Levites? Halfway, we're halfway into this year. What about the Levites? Well, they're increasing, aren't they? Now, are they increasing in number? It's possible. Are they increasing in stature? Are they increasing in anointing? Absolutely. Are they increasing in servanthood? Oh, yeah. yeah. So let's see it like God sees it. I have created them to help, help me with my mission. And I have to start with this new temple that I'm rebuilding or building. I have to start with the, at the foundation level called these Levites, called you. And I'm going to increase them in many ways. And six months ago, he said that they were going to increase in several ways. And there was more than just numbers and servanthood and anointing. I can't remember the other. I'd have to look it up. But he also said, which stood out to me, that your psalm will have to fight for their position. Don't you love a good fight? <laughs> some people do some people don't you know I used to like to fight but Bishop was no fun to fight with he wouldn't fight back that was no challenge <laughs> Elder Christy uh, a week ago preached a message about King Hezekiah and I couldn't help but think when she was preaching this word, um, like I, I heard Bishop in it over and over and over. She said, you know, Hezekiah was taking the Israelites, you know, and turning them back to God. And that he was systematically doing um, each step along the way. You know, he was getting the idols out. He was cleansing the temple. He was bringing worship back in the house. He was teaching them about the feast and how to, separate, or how to celebrate it. And I kept thinking, you know, it's just like Bishop. And I wonder if the Israelites felt like, you know, after they cleansed the temple and then he brought the feast to him, I wonder if they felt, okay, one more thing we got to do. Are we ever going to arrive? Because, you know, I kind of had the feeling like, I always feel like that's where Bishop is at. We get all this done. It's like the carrot and it keeps moving. Yeah. One more thing. <laughs> but it keeps us going, doesn't it? Yeah. So Bishop has systematically, you know, done like King Hezekiah and, you know, got this house in order. He really has. We are in order. We are ready for God to bring lost sheep to us. We are ready to be anointed to go out and give the message of God to them and so that anybody that can hear the shepherd's voice will come. But one more instruction. 
one more thing. The corporate house is in order. But now we have to look at our own houses. And we have to get our house in order. What am I talking about? I'm talking about... Help! I need somebody. Help! Not just anybody. Help! You know I need someone. Help! Yeah, help. We've got to get our houses in order. Now, some of your houses may be in order, but I just don't know why God would give us the fourth instruction if it was in order. That's my concern. That's my red flag. One thing I know about order is it brings the anointing. And another thing I know about order is it's effective. If I have order in my classroom, it is an effective hour. If I come in three minutes late, after the bell rings, it's already out of order. The kids are already taken over. <laughs> and it's hard to pull them back. So order is effective. And order is going to be what, what sets us apart from everything else in the world and everyone else in the world. So go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to be reading this portion of scripture, um, 1 through 16, but I'm going to kind of make some breaks along the way. So be ye followers of me, even as I am also, or even as I also am of Christ. Okay, this is Paul. Okay, so in other words, follow me as I follow Christ. That's what Paul's saying to the church at Corinth. I've heard bishops say that. Follow me as I follow Christ. As helpmates, we ought to also be saying, you know, I'm going to follow you as you follow Christ. Whoever that is, if that's, you know, we'll talk about order in just a minute. But do what I do because I'm doing what, what God is doing. I'm doing what the Messiah would do. Verse 2. Now I praise you. Isn't it nice that Paul is praising these people? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I suddenly got new uh, revelation on, uh, you know, Paul's just hard to understand. I had to go ask Bishop a few things. This doesn't make sense to me. You know, he, he truly is hard to understand. But I, I understood this part. Now I praise you. Oh, I like that part. <laughs> that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances I delivered them to you. Verse 3. But I would... Not have you ignorant, or another translation says, but I would have you to know that the head of every man is the woman, and the head of every, um, oh, oh, oh no, wait. It says that the head, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. You know, I couldn't help but think he was, he was confused here. Because. I see a lot of women that are the head of men. And it's unattractive. It's, ugh. But, so Paul was doing some things here. He was, he was wanting um, the church at Corinth to know some things about order. He was wanting them to know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of every woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Now, you might be saying, well, I'm not married, so that, you know, yay. Well, they're still ahead. Okay? The head is God. Or, it, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about this order and submission, but in this portion of Scripture, he talks about, um, you know, order to authority and submission, and thus, you know, the possible title, a symbol of authority, is a head. Okay, so who's your head? If you've ever taken Bible school, and you probably don't even have to take Bible school, to have heard bishops say this a million times about the order of the kingdom of God. God over Jesus, Jesus over the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost over the pastor, the pastor over the man, the man over the woman, the woman over the child, the child over the dog, the dog over the cat, the cat over the mouse, the mouse over the cheese. Order. We know this. But, you know, if I know anything about the enemy, 
If I know anything about how God, about how the devil tries to pervert things, he tries to switch the order up. I've never been bitten by a dog, but I've come close. That would be out of order. <clears throat> I tried to be the head of our house, and I was quickly reminded that there would be one king in our house and that I needed to learn how to be a queen. And I think what set me free the most was understanding that two heads are a freak. Let me think about it. A, a monster or a freak, a freak show would be, come see the two heads. Just look in the American family. Two heads. I, I don't know if you're getting this. God is saying that he is making us that he is building this last phase of the temple, that he's given us all these instructions, and the last instruction before the sheep come is to get to our house in order. And so we have to make sure that we are doing his will and not our will. So children, they have to take on this persona of not my will, but thine be done. Women have to take on this, this same thing. Not my will, but my husband's will be done if I have one. And if I don't, then it's God's will. Men, you have to take on the same thing. Not my will, but the Lord's will be done. You know, you know right? The order. Yeah. Jesus even has to be in order. Not my will, but the Father's will be done. We all have to have a garden experience and know that we are, we are dead to our own will and we are alive to his will. It's the only way we can be good. Help. Help. I need somebody. Help. Not just anybody. Help. You know, I need someone. Help. So order. I got thinking about this. Bishop and I have been on, you know, not in the last month or so, but prior to that, we've been watching a lot of biblical movies. And, and I walked away when I started thinking about this message of, you know, they put so much emphasis on motherhood in the biblical day. Like you were nobody unless you had children. Yeah. True, right? And we all know the story of Hannah and Sarah and Rebecca. They were barren and, oh, my gosh, the world was coming to an end because they couldn't have children or they didn't have children. But just as children were so important in that day to the identity and the purpose of a, a woman, it was because there was a purpose behind those children, not just the mother. It wasn't about being a mother. It was about having children and raising a kingdom of kings and priests. But we have lost that over the course of years. We have so lost that. And, you know, we had some help losing it. The enemy totally perverted motherhood. He totally took away the emphasis of, hello, you are a helpmate. And you are helping the, your husband with his mission. And then, you know, you're helping God with his mission. It's called the kingdom of God on this earth. We need kings and priests. Not just a bunch of people. When we lose the purpose for motherhood, it puts us in a dangerous place. Mothers without the purpose of raising their children to be a king and a priest, they fall into this partiality thing. And why is it that mothers are always partial to the rebel? They didn't like that. It's true. Why is it? In many instances, especially outside of the, of the, you know, real church, mothers are partial to a rebel, always trying to be the savior. Save that rebel. At the expense of someone who, uh, another member or another child of their family that is serving God. But we'll go the extra mile to save that rebel. We'll make it easy for them. We'll bend the rules. 
We'll give more. We'll bless them more than we would bless the individual, um, the child that is doing what we train them to do. Right? You've heard um, bishops say a lot from the pulpit, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. And I hear it at work. And, you know, something inside me just goes, eh. I don't like it. Because giving mama what she wants is not going to make her happy. I don't know if you know that. It's just not going to happen because there's always going to be one more thing. And mothering outside of the will of God, mothering and nurturing outside of um, God's purpose of raising kings and priests, you'll, it will be empty. It'll be fun for a while and then it, it becomes empty because you don't know what the purpose is. Everything has to have a purpose. Rick Warren was doing something pretty great when he came up with the phrase purpose-driven church. The only problem was driven versus led, but, you know, he got the purpose part right. Everybody needs a purpose. One thing I know about um, being a mom and being a helpmate is that I really only, a couple things that would make me happy, and I didn't know this right away, mind you, but one of the things that would make me happy that I found security in is that I was helping someone who knew what they were doing and their mission was from God. That helped me a lot. Gave me real purpose. It made me um, fulfilled and it, it made me secure. I felt secure in that. The, the, what happens though, as you know, is that we start falling into this place sometimes, women at least, um, fall into this place of uh, their purpose becomes trying to make their children happy. <clears throat> I see it all the time in school. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> How many men are still trying to make their wives happy and bending their call of God to do it? How many pastors are trying to make their congregation happy instead of doing the will of the Lord? Maybe we should start focusing on making God happy. Because after all, he said, Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. Help, you know I need someone. Help. Help. He needs some help. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. Now this, um, this confused me, because in the world today, I still see Jewish men with this little hat on their head. And I thought, well, right here, Paul says that that's, a dis that's dishonoring his head. And who should his head be? Christ, Christ right? So a covering, let's talk about a covering. A covering is the authority over you. <clears throat> now, if you have a husband who doesn't have his head on straight, literally, you know, doing anti-God things or anti-Christ things or just, just, you know, being stupid, well, then bishop is a safe covering for you. This isn't a cult. Paul and has said, and Bishop has repeated it, follow me as I follow Christ. So Bishop can be the head of any woman until her husband gets his head on straight. Correct. Until he gets Christ on straight. Until he gets, you know, the order right. Yeah? You single um, people, male or female, you have a head. Called Christ is your head. If you need a more natural covering, then bishop is your covering. I mean, I find safety in that. Okay, I don't know if you're liking that. <clears throat> Thank God for born-again men. Yes. Woo! I'm so blessed about born-again men. Because these are men that are uh, 
learning to let Christ be their head. They're, be, they're learning how to, you know, call on the name of Yahovah. They're learning how to be the priest of their home. They're learning. Come on, it's a rare thing, people. It is so rare. <clears throat> we grew up listening to our fathers. I'm going to talk about myself for a minute, saying, ask your mother. Well, what's your mother say? You're supposed to be the priest of the home. What do you say? But responsibility shifts. Verse 5. But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. <clears throat> You probably know this, in the biblical time, if um, a woman did not have hair or was shaved, it meant she was a prostitute. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shaved. Or, but if it be a shame, um, but if it be a shame for a woman to be shaven, let her be covered. Verse 7, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Now, I, I personally like that. Come on, ladies. Isn't that, like, give you purpose? Oh, glory, right here. I got, a, I got a purpose. I'm supposed to be the glory of my man. I don't know. I like it. I love it. I'm glad there's a few women in the house that like it. Um, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman. People don't know this. Ne say it, I'll say it again, verse 9, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Come on, the devil has perverted the order of the American family. Yeah. He's even perverted the, um, the order of families of other cultures where women are doormats and, you know, walk three steps behind. Hello? I can't help you walking three steps behind you. Anyway. So the instruction as the Levite tribe, as the Levites, we got to get our homes in order. So are you helping in that order of, are you helping the man of the house or is the man of the house helping you? Now, you might say, well, Bishop helps you get out the door in the morning. He does. <laughs> Not really. But, but I'm helping him in that. I am going to work because right now I am helping him financially. Now, does that mean I'm not helping him in the ministry? Absolutely not. I'm still helping him in the ministry. And I have to make sure, which is a challenge for me, that I am not serving two masters. And that, that's a challenge, and I have to keep it in check all the time. But I am not, he is not created to help me. I am created, God made me to help him. So you might go, well, my husband doesn't have a mission. He doesn't do anything. Well, that's all right. Because God has a mission, and he said it's time to get to work. And he said that he needed some help. Yeah. And he said that, you know, he was making you to do just that. So you know what the mission is? Go find some lost sheep. Yeah. I'm going to anoint you. I'm going to increase you. I'm going to give you the words of God. I'm going to give you a cutting word that if they are sheep, they will hear my voice, and they will follow you to the house of God where they can grow, where they can be nourished in green pastures. I love the, you know, I get a little, um, mm, not offended, but uh, what is the word? I get a little annoyed with people saying God told me. And I know, I know, just as soon as I say that, you say, well, God said, well, because he did. 
So women prophesying without a cover, they always want to say, God said this and God said that. It really is quite annoying because you are taking away the power that can come from a woman that is covered and is submitted and has and the home is in order that she really can hear from God and does hear from God. You know what I'm talking about, right? When you cry wolf, nobody pays attention. Well, if every woman out there is prophesying, nobody's ta- paying attention, right? But there's a lot of women out there prophesying and saying that God said this when he didn't because their home is out of order. They, they don't have a head. They don't have a covering. And when you don't have a covering, you can get pretty flaky. When you don't have things in order, you can, you know, dream up some pretty crazy things because you have to understand, is it you? No, it's other voices telling you. And you're listening. And then you're repeating it. And men, you need to remember what Bishop says. You've got 24 hours to, you know, make anything null and void (laughs) that your wife says. I've said a few things. And, uh... Bishop is quick to say, nah, I'm, I'm going to make that null and void. I mean, you know, like I would, I didn't say God said it, but it was me. I would say, I think I'm going to do da 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 He'd say, I was going to loan our SUV to somebody for two weeks. It's a good thing he got a hold of me before 24 hours was up because he said, I'm making that null and void. You're not loaning our SUV to someone for two weeks. Okay. (laughs) And now I absolutely know why. I absolutely know why. Paul goes on to talk more about this, um, you know, and about uh, women women having a covering. And, you know, I'll just skip down to verse 15 because you might have a question about this. I'm still in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. And um, it it says, but if a woman have long hair, it's a glory to her for her hair is given her for a covering. Well, that's Paul talking about in the natural. It has nothing to do with a spiritual covering. Today, we're talking about being a helpmate to God. We are talking about our houses being in order, and it's a spiritual thing. Am I boring you? Okay, good. I'll keep going then. I think this is, um, this is important um, to all of us, but more importantly um, to the house because it is rare to see a house in order out there. It's uncommon. Like the Sabbath was um, talking about, you know, holiness. It, it's uncommon. And, you know, let me just, pick, you know, not pick on, but talk about Elder Christie for a moment. Before Deacon Heath, you know, got his head on straight, um, Elder Christie would look to Bishop as a covering. And then, but as soon as Deacon Heath got his head on, well, now Elder Christie looks to Deacon Heath. But guess what? Deacon Heath looks to God and Bishop for his covering. Sometimes we need a voice in the natural you know, to say, okay, this is what I think. What, what do you think about this? Is this, you know, what God is saying? Uh-huh. So that's a prime example for those of you who don't, who are not married, and um, that there's freedom in that. And even um, male and female, are you hearing me? Is this for you? You are, you have a mission to help God. You have a mission right now to help Jesus. So what is that help, you might ask? Well, Mark Mark 16, verse 15 to 20, it's the Great Commission. So let's just read it. You're familiar with it. But he, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, so not everyone's going to believe, right? 
And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken, after the Lord had spoken, what happened? He left. Right? He left. He was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. So guess what? Right now, today, he left us with the last thing that he said. You know, if you are confused, if you are in a storm, never make any major decisions in a storm. But here's what you do. Go back to the last instruction. The last thing that he said before he left was, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and some will believe and some won't. And if they don't believe, move along, little sheep. Move along. It's, you can't help that. That's their choice. So they went forth and preached everywhere and the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. I'm telling you, if you are really Yahovah's helpmate, if you are really about his mission, the Great Commission, I promise you that signs will follow the word. I promise you that signs will confirm what you are saying because that is what it, the scripture says. Now, as you know, we are on our way to Pentecost. We are walking towards the mountain of God. Well, I submit to you that we've got to get a couple things in order so that when we get to the mountain of God, that we're all in a position to rule and reign. And then, bam, God adds to this church. So if you look around and you say, where is everybody? Well, they're coming. But he's had to get a couple things in order first. You know, plus you already know the first harvest is tares. Yeah. So he had to get some tares out of the way. You can't tell the difference between tares and wheat until it grows up. Yeah. Yeah. And, the time of harvest. and the time of harvest, which is Pentecost. Have you ever looked in your, in, I have a berm, but your flower garden, and, and of course Bishop is always asking me, well, I don't know what to round up. Is that a flower or is that a weed? You know, and the joke around our house is I plant pickers because they're purple. Yeah, duh. All right, not anymore. I'm still pulling those suckers out. But you, you, you can't tell if you don't know what you're looking for. But it becomes obvious when the harvest is ready. Oh, that's wheat. Mm, that's a tear. This is good news because I am elated to think that I am the glory of my husband and, and that I have been chosen to help by God. And God has made me to be the perfect help. I love it. I love it. Are you as excited about that as I am? Good. So, let's go back and recap. Let's just pick up on the last part. Number one, get your house in order. Number two, be about the Great Commission. Because three, you're, you've been made to help him. Help your husband. Your husband is helping Christ. Christ is helping God. If you're a male... You're like skipping that, you know, part and going right to Christ or helping Bishop. So I want to encourage you this morning to examine yourself because there's a reason why we examine ourselves. So we can, we know where we're at and what we need to do. What's our next move? That's why. Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, I could pray, but I want to present um, some gifts today to our helpmates. Right. Sorry, male helpmates, I didn't bring anything for you. <laughs> but we have a meal, 
after the service. Yeah. So that's good because I've heard that, you know, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> so one of my message titles was the number one accessory. <laughs> you know, and I got thinking about that too. You know, wow, we're, we are a real great accessory to our man. Yeah. How, how cool is that? That brings, that gives me hope. That gives me uh, a purpose, you know, to get on that treadmill. I think. Okay. If you heard him, he said, just go to work. Yeah, a scarf is a great accessory. Okay. And a scarf back in the day, if you, a, a simple scarf is a head covering. So that's how we started out with this. But I knew back in November, I was at the Amway Grand, and my favorite story, Manuel's, you know, God with us. And um, I knew that the, I was supposed to buy scarves for the women for Mother's Day. And I didn't know what the message was. I didn't have any idea how it was all come, gonna come about, but I knew one thing, and that was, that is my favorite store ever. And um, in fact, I got this skirt there. Isn't that cool? Um, but I got all of these scarves there. So God with you. Authority, God's authority with you. God's order with you. The symbol of authority. A scarf can be worn on your head or around your neck. It can be worn in many different ways. You can take the most boring thing, add a scarf to it, and it is bam. bam. Right? Now, you know, men can't relate to this, but that's all right. Oh, okay. He can, Bishop can relate to it. So I have asked... Uh, Minister Riley to come up and help me and the first one I want to um, present is that middle one with yellow on it and okay I have tried to tie scarves not on myself so that I could put it on you I don't know if it's going to happen but it it may not be important but what you should know is you can yeah he was my <laughs> model but what you should know is that you have to work with it. And every good scarf is, um, it works with different types of the ways you tie them, but you have to be aware of the texture of the scarf and how bulky it is and how long it is and, and all that. All that affects this, right? So Miss um, Stephanie Carter, the first one I have is for you. And I want you to know that Thursday on my way to work, I heard the Lord say the Queen of Sheba and I saw your face and I thought, what's that Queen of Sheba? And um, so I looked it up in the Bible. You can come on up here. And you know what, Minister Riley, let's do it on this side. So if you want to just walk this way, because um, I'll come down there in a moment. But hers is the, um, hers is the, yeah, you can walk behind me. Hers is the only one that actually heard a word, like the actual word. I mean, it was almost audible, the Queen of Sheba. I thought, okay. And I will tell you that this scarf is in the top two of all those up there for me personally. I mean, I love it. I hope you love it too. But let me talk to you about the Queen of Sheba. The Queen of Sheba, according to biblical narratives, was a woman of great wealth, a woman of great beauty, and a woman of great power. Hmm. I know, right? That, is that impressive or what? Wish you had said that about me. Um, here's another thing that stands out to me. Again, according to um, biblical um, narrative, it is, should I just read it? Um, Although there is little evidence outside the Bible as to the nature of the monarchy and how it was established, one thing is clear, and that is that the Queen of Sheba ruled alone. And then the other thing that's very clear is that she was not enamored, you know, like taken, like, like so impressed with the religions in her own land. Wow, right? The Queen of Sheba traveled to Jerusalem, and, what, and you're a word woman, so I want you to take a look at 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 1, and, and read through that portion. Because it, it talks about, she heard about the fame of Solomon. 
And so she traveled to Jerusalem to meet him. She wanted to see the temple. She wanted to meet Solomon. She had heard everything about how great wisdom, what great wisdom he had. And, and so she asked him some hard questions. And the Bible says that he answered every one of them. Hard questions. I don't know if that means you're going to get some hard questions, but I'm here to tell you that God, your bishop, can answer those hard questions. Now, some people will say um, that they've speculated that she had a secret child with King Solomon. That can't be proven. It's speculation. And in that same speculation, people will say that the Song of Solomon was written about King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Like all that, you know, um, romance and everything. People speculate that that's what that is. Now, again, can't be proven, but just to let you know that. Um, the Queen of Sheba is mentioned even in the New Testament in Matthew 12, 42 and Luke eleven thirty one, 31. And um, it's referred to an, uh, um, an alternative title called the Queen of South. Anyway, I, I thought this was significant because on many levels, really, um, a woman of great wealth, beauty and power, and that is so you. And um, the fact that I don't know. When I look at this scarf, I see you. When I look at this scarf, I see great wealth. I even see great power. So I'm going to tie, I'm going to attempt to tie this like a single bow, a bow on one side. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no. See, I'm so used to my own ways. So you tie it like a, um, a shoe. And then you loop it and just like, but you're only going to tie one half of the bow whoops sorry okay. we can pull your hair out in a minute and then you kind of arrange it like I, again i can do this on myself better than i can do it but you know and then you can kind of move it around and then you turn around and voila beautiful yeah. happy helpmates day <laughs> amen you. bless you <laughs> okay, Elder Christy, you're next, and then Melissa. And Elder Christy gets that. I bet you could guess which one she gets, the one on the far side. She's kind of wild. Lots of animal print going on. I, I'm sorry for those of you who don't like animal print. You'll notice that most of them have animal, pr animal print in them. Yeah, and when I looked at this, I saw, oh my gosh, this is like Joseph, the technicolor or the, you know, multicolored uh, coat. What do they call it? The coat of many colors. That's what they call it. But I saw the Broadway, the techni technicolor, yeah, technicolor dream coat. So um, a coat of many colors. And I know who prophesied over um, Bishop that he would be a Joseph in the end days, but when I saw this and I felt like it was a coat of many colors, I knew that you would be a Joseph all, also, and you would be a Joseph in the area and in the way of um, you've been through the pit and now you're at the door of the palace. Joseph's end time was so much greater than his beginning, even though he was a man of God his entire time, right? And he, and he didn't succumb to the temptation of Potiphar's wife. And I mean, he had lots of opportunity. He never went south. He never got out of order, did he? And God rewarded him. And look what he did in his end days. So I submit to you, I declare that you are standing at the door of the palace. And God says, I'm going to use you in this hour like never before. And you'll become a Joseph, a, fe a Josephine, can I say that? A, a female Joseph to where you will rule in ways that other women will only dream of. So every time you put this scarf on, I want you to remember that God is your authority, your husband is your authority, and that your purpose is to rule in a palace. Happy Helpmates Day. Miss mm -hmm. Melissa. Um, that one. 
I always wonder if people can um, look at that and go, oh, that one's her, that one's. And, oh, not that one, the other one, the bluish one. And I know I wanted to, I almost wanted to change my mind after looking oh, at your clothes today. But, um, yeah, and I looked at this one, and I thought, there's a lot going on here. I mean, there is a lot going on here. So I thought, you know, that isn't that just like God? God says there's a lot going on here <laughs> because of all the gifts and the talents that he's given you to help, to help your husband and to help him. So every time you wear this, and I'm going to do something different with you, and I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try it. This is called the cowl. Now, bear with me. Oh, no. And it might, see, I don't know if it's long enough, but we'll try it. Tell me when it, so, <laughs> tell me when your air supply is cut off. But the cool thing about this is that God wants you to be reminded every time you look at this that there's so much going on, that there's so much that he wants to do with you and you're just beginning. You're a late bloomer and you're just beginning to step into it. Okay, now I hope I'm not messing up your hair. Is it too tight? <laughs> so it's kind of, and you can retie it, but I wanted to just... Can I pull your hair out or you pull your hair out? That'll make some difference right there. Whew. So look at all the colors in here. And I want, every time you wear this, I want you to know that you have been given authority by God to help your husband in spectacular ways and to help God in spectacular ways. Happy Helpmates Day. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, I'm going to have a drink of my water here. And, um, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you who's coming. So, like, if you're on camera, you can uh, make your way up here. So we'll do Amanda Riley, and then we'll do um, Stephanie Schrall, the green and, and um, zebra. And then we'll do Miss Sue. And then we'll do Becky. So we've got some things going on. Okay, so Miss Amanda Riley. Now, you may not think this is great, and you may not like it. You know, it may not be your taste, and yet you'd be surprised when you put it with the right thing how cool it's going to be. But, you know, a lot of options here. <laughs> options, that's what God says for you. You've got options. You don't know all the options that you have. You are stuck in one option, and God says there are so many more options I have for you. There's so many more things I'm going to do with you. Call to be a teacher? Sure. But call to do and help in a lot of different ways? Absolutely. A helper is one who teaches others to help as well. So God wants you to wear this scarf and know that you have options beyond just teaching the Word of God. You've been set apart. Make sure that your calling and election is sure, but please don't sell your gifts short. You have options. You have more things on the inside of you that will help him than just teach the word of God. Although that's an honor, it's only one piece of it. So I'm going to attempt to um, tie this. It's called the double knot or the double slip. You can tell this is how I always wear my scarves. Um, Okay, so what you do is you, um, or it might be the pretzel, you twist it once, and then you bring it back through. And um, I know men, you, you could care less about this, but we're having a good time, okay? <laughs> and, and if you're not having a good time, just, you know, yeah, you tie ties. If you're not having a good time, just fake it, okay? <laughs> now, turn it, beautiful. beautiful. Okay, oh, let's take your hair out. You can take your hair out. So options lots of options there you can wear pink brown um, blue just tie it a different way right you can pick up the blue in that you can pick up the tan in that or brown lots of options enjoy
Something like this. <laughs> okay, Stephanie Schraw. Uh, you know, I looked at this um, scarf and it just screamed Stephanie Schraw. Now, Stephanie wears scarves very well. And I look at this one and, you know, she wears infinity scarves and she wears them really well. So you obviously know how to tie a lot of them. But I looked at this and I thought, mm, she's a little wild and she's a little solid. It's good. Wild is fun, but solid is stability. And just as wild and fun as you want to be, God says, uh, there's another half to you, and the other half has to become stable, has to, have, has to scream stability, because nothing in your world, as how you were raised, nothing in your life would, would uh, scream stability. So people would know that was God. Okay. And, and God wants you to know that every time you look at this, let alone every time you wear it, that he has given you authority to overcome all of the other things that have been thrown your way because you can still be fun, but now in that fun, you're going to find stability. You're going to be, you're going to be stable. And that is what people are going to be attracted to. Amen. Father, thank you for this help me. Thank you. She may think she doesn't have a man to help right now, but God, you are her man until you fully make her and present her to her man. And you know, it's not that far off. Amen. Happy Helpmates Day. Bless you. Okay, did um, we go with Sue? And then Miss, um, uh, Miss Becky. Okay, which one? Okay, this one. Now, it's hard sometimes when you know somebody. I, can't, I knew I wouldn't be able to get it off. Because I know Sue well enough to know she would not wear a scarf. She would not want anything around her neck. Right? But that's the beauty of a scarf, the number one accessory. Because, you know, you can take your purse and you can tie a scarf on your purse and it can just be the perfect accessory and add some cool, you know, pizzazz to your purse. So, you know, I mean, you can tie it different ways, but it's a cool look, right? So, you know, you may not want to wear that thing around your neck, but you can wear it over your shoulder. And I want you to know that when you do, God says, I'm going to anoint you once again to be the helper that you've always wanted to be and that you have been. I'm going to anoint you with the authority to bring back all those gifts that you have been trusted with to bring it back to the kingdom of God. This is about helpmates day and you have been the grandiose help of them all. But it's been, it's been, it's been kind of gone away for a while. But you know what? Have no fear because God is bringing it back. God is bringing you back into a purpose to be able to see. I want to help. I want to do this. I, this is in me to do. I want to please my heavenly father. I want to fulfill the call on my life. Make your calling and election sure. Miss anointed helpmate. Miss spectacular, grandiose, fabulous helpmate that you are. Amen. Happy Helpmates Day. All right. Yes, Miss Becky. Becky was another one that I thought, oh, she doesn't, you know, she's not going to um, love wearing a scarf around her neck. But, you know, she's always got a coat on. She's cold. So maybe so. You know, we're going to warm her up a little bit. I, I like this. Oh, good. I love it when they like, when they like it. This one's pretty, but it's big. And it's um, the texture of it. Not every tie is going to work with it, but here's one that really will work with it. And when I look at this, and the reason it screams you is because it's so classy. It's just so classy. And you can take nothing and turn it into class. I don't know if you know that. But this is um, a authority on you. You may go, I, okay, this whole message, whatever. But you know what? You are going to find a purpose like you haven't found before. Okay, I, I happen to know personally that you have no desire to get married. It's fine. God says, 
I can still, I still need you because you are help. And I am choosing you to help me with my mission. And I am choosing you because there'll be a population that will be drawn to you because of your gifts and talents, because of your ability to help, because of you be able to turn nothing into something. I mean, you do that. I don't know if you know that. Oh, I can do that. You did that. You made sure that was straight. You, made, you can build. What female builds? I don't know. You, you can do a lot of. <laughs> oh, see there? See, God put that in you. And you know what? The body of Christ needs that. This house needs that. But more importantly, God needs your help. God needs your help in the physical realm. He needs your help in the spiritual realm. He needs your help to go be the witness that he knows that you are. And he, he needs your help to just be comfortable with who you are because people are going to love who you are. Don't hide it from them. Show it off. You're a classy lady. Amen? Happy help. I love you too. <laughs> you know what's God when two strong females can get along. You know, I mean, true. Like, I, Becky's got a strong personality. Whew. Yeah, but so do I. But, you know, we love each other and we respect each other. And when you're in the kingdom of God, you understand and you see the gifts and talents. And it's like, hey, we're about the Father's business. We're all on the same team. We're all helping to accomplish this thing, right? Oh, however you did that, Melissa, that looks awesome. Oh, you just loosened it. Okay. I've been known to be wound a little tight. <laughs> um, is Amanda Rylu or Amanda um, Evans, is my, see, I tried to do a new tie with mine, and um, I see it came a little loose. And then, Diane, if you want to make your way up here, too, I've got something for you. So this one is um, for Amanda and she's on her way up here. I, mean, I don't know if you've noticed, Amanda's always wearing orange. <laughs> and um, I think this one looks like you in, on many levels. But I don't know. Did you hear the message? Okay, so National Day of Help. Happy Helpmates Day. Two solid colors. And yet... As Bishop said on Friday night, holiness is fun. I want you to wear this scarf and remember that God has given you authority to help. Help him and help your husband. I want you to wear this scarf and know that you've been created uniquely all by yourself. And you don't have to take on anybody else's part because you are just Amanda Evans. And when you married Nate Evans, God said he gave you a new name. And that new name has brought new things in your life that are buried. Because they haven't come out. But they're in there. And God is going to put a demand on those things which are in there to help your husband and to help him in this season. So wear this scarf and know you've been given the symbol of authority because God has an order and his order is authority. And when you stay in that place of authority, you're going to see these magnificent things come to the surface. You've been uniquely made. You've been so individual, unlike any other. Unlike any other. Mates Day. I love you. Amen. <laughs> Plus, she was born on my birthday. <laughs> no. And Miss Diane's making her way up here. Now, this is National Day of Help. This is Happy Help Day. Thank you so much. And um, this is one of the unique ones because any one of those scarves can turn into an infinity. They call this an infinity scarf. And um, any of one of these ladies could tie their scarf this way, like take the ends and tie them and then loop it around. This is how it works. So you find the seam, which happens to be right there, and you put it in the back. And it's just like, um, oh, got caught on my ring. And then you just kind of twist it like an eight, a figure eight. And then you 
put it back over your head and then you kind of adjust it the way you like it and it adds color to anything that you wear but I'm putting this on you to remind you and to declare to you that you still have authority in your life you may feel like you're alone but you're not alone God is your authority he is your head and he still has a purpose for you to help he has a purpose for you to help him on his mission he said get to work man who are you talking to you're with a whole lot of people you're with more people than elder Christie. you people are around you start talking to them about god and about what he's doing in your life and listen for the sheep on their response listen to see if they can hear the shepherd's voice and lead them to the house of god we probably need to help you get set up and start a online portion there if, if we could do that. But I guess the point I want to make is that God still sees you as help. You know, sometimes when we get in our elder years, we think, well, it's over. There's nothing I can do. Not so. You, can you talk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I knew you could. <laughs> right. So you can talk to people and tell them about the goodness of God. Okay. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Okay. And listen for sheep, because the mission is finding lost sheep and bringing them back into the fold. Okay. Will you do that? I'll try. All right, then you are qualified to help God. Okay. Happy Helpmates Day. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> well, we did good, it's 11.52. And um, Miss Nancy, I know you're online, and um, Sue is, or not Sue, but um, Deb is online, and who else? Um, but Miss Nancy, we certainly miss you in this house, and you know, you're one of these, you know, you belong in this house, because, and you know someone belongs in this house when you haven't seen or heard from them in quite some time, and the minute you, they chat in and you see them, it's like, no lost time. You're right there. You know, I mean, there's a couple friends I have like that, right? And, but when it comes to the um, kingdom of God, you know that you are a part of us when that happens. So I just want to remind you that God is your head, that Christ is your authority, and that just because you are a single woman doesn't mean that you don't have anyone to help. So I'm going to challenge you, help him. Could I be so bold and almost selfish to say, help us find lost sheep. Help us be about our father's business, which is what you should do anyway, right? And where are you going to lead them? To a green pasture. You know for sure that this is a green pasture, that people can grow here, that they can be nourished here. So I'm going to leave you with that. And um, I hope you hear that. Happy Helpmates Day. Deb, are you still here? Deb Hewitt, are you still here? Oh, Darlene is here. Hi, Darlene. Says that you've listened to the whole service. Great message. Oh, thanks. Um, and so it's Helpmates Day, so I guess the question becomes, who are we helping? Right? <clears throat> when I'm at North Branch, I, I uh, which is my school that I teach at, I help my boss as much as I can. Whoops, is that a facial expression? <laughs> I help my boss. Mm -hmm. We're helping someone. So the question would be, who are we helping? On national, I'm, well, I'm really blowing this thing up, aren't I? Now it's national. National Helpmates Day, um, you know, we have to celebrate who we're helping and what the mission is. <laughs> Paul gave handkerchiefs, is what she's saying. Reverend Connie gives scarves. Amen. <laughs> That's good. Anyway, I just want to declare to you, Darlene, that as you are in the zone of helping him, believe it or not, it's going to come back to you hundredfold.
it's going to come back to you. It's a sowing and reaping principle. Now, granted, it's all about his mission, not ours. And I would just, um, could I just encourage you to uh, make sure, examine yourself that this is a mission that he's given you and not one that you've created on your own. I always envy um, people who want to do all these grandiose things because I never did. And I always think, what's wrong with me? Why don't I want to do that? And why don't I want to preach? And why don't I want to... But what I will say to you, Miss Sister Darlene, is that you have such a heart to, to be in the kingdom of God, but you haven't always known what that, is, what that looks like. So I'm here to give you a little vision of what that looks like. If your focus is always about helping him do his mission, you'll be safe. And if you know that he is your head, okay, and if you need a, uh, in the natural, a covering, well, this house, you've been um, hanging around this house a little bit. You know, and you've heard enough to know that this is sound doctrine here and that there can be a covering here. But just like Minister Riley says, you have to be open to receive it. So, happy Helpmates Day, and may the Lord do great things in your life as you help him on his mission. Deb is on her way to work, but still listening on her phone, to be clear. Okay, great. Thanks, Reverend Mark. So, Deb Hewitt. Now, there's someone, someone that has a lot of... Um, craftiness you know she can create she can make and again remember where we came from six months of vacation to be refreshed so that we could create now Deb God wants you to create but he wants you to create things that are for his kingdom that are in his kingdom he wants you to take those gifts and talents the need to need to have a purpose and bring it into the kingdom of God so that you can be satisfied Nothing's greater than being satisfied in what we do. I personally have reached a point in my life that I have become so satisfied it's scary because I equate that to I've gotten lazy or I've gotten complacent or I've gotten like, oh, I'm not productive like I once was. But, you know, it's... You know, and I've talked to Bishop about that, and um, we've had this conversation, so he has set me straight on a few things. <clears throat> but so I say to you that helping and, and, and being and the creator that God has made you to be is a purpose. And now it's like this National Day of Helpmates is the purpose is to help him. The purpose is to help your husband. The purpose is to take that, all those gifts and create that which he would have you create. If I could put a scarf around your neck to ne today, I would say, remember, this is a symbol of authority. But without authority in your life, you have no authority. And without submitting to a, a, a higher authority, whether it be your husband or Christ, but you have a husband, so, and he is in the, the ministry, so it, it, you would have to submit to him to, to have authority. The reason I have authority at North Branch more than any other um, teacher is because two things. One is I understand the principle of submission and authority, and I do my very best to stay submitted to my boss, but I am also submitted to, to Christ. But I know how important it is to stay, stay submitted to my boss as well. So I would just put this scarf, tie it really pretty, create something unique like you would, and say, you have all the authority that you want as long as you are under authority. Amen? Happy Helpmates Day. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our time together. And I know the men are all jealous because... Um, they didn't get anything, but they're, we're all going to eat, so we're getting a meal. And um, uh, again, ladies, I would just remind you that um, that scarf is a symbol. You know, and, and um, Christ.
Christ as our head is power on our head. Being submitted to um, your husband as he is submitted to the Lord is power on your head. And so you can imagine why I had such a hard time figuring out what the title of my message was. So enjoy your authority. Enjoy be coming into that place of help to the Great Commission. And be aware of the last instruction. Amen? Leave right